Today we're filming a what I eat in a day. For those of you that don't know, I'm Myra from Low Carb Love. I've lost over 135 pounds. I've maintained my weight for over 15 years. So today I'm just gonna show you some of the foods that have helped me throughout the years on my weight loss journey. And I'm here to show you the variety of foods that you can have on yours. One of the things I say the most is focus on protein. Um, I always recommend focusing on protein just because I feel like it's really something that has helped me out throughout the years. Now, when I'm like not really knowing what to eat or I just feel like really like nourishing my body where I feel like I want those vitamins and protein all in like one shot, I always make a smoothie. So today we're going to make a protein smoothie. It's one of my go-tos. Um, I love this protein. It's the vanilla. It has like hints of caramel, super, super clean ingredients. This is the one from um, Ritual. I'll leave it linked for you um, so you know which one I'm using, but I love it because it's plant-based, dairy-free, gluten-free, soy-free, super, super, super clean ingredients. We're going to start off with our almond milk. Pour in our almond milk one scoop of protein. And this one actually has 20 grams of protein per scoop, which I love. Oh my God, it smells like absolutely delicious. And um, I love it because it is sweetened with monk fruit. So you guys know, if I can um, have something that's super clean ingredients and doesn't have all the sugar and has all the nutrients, like I'm there for it. So we have our almond milk, our protein powder, a little cocoa powder. So this is unsweetened cocoa powder. And I like to use a Dutch process because it's just like really deep and rich. Um, but of course you're gonna use like whatever you have on hand. Um, now, I used to love, so I love creamy, thick smoothies. Um, I used to add banana, but of course like to keep it low carb, um, to give it that same creaminess, I use avocado. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, you're not gonna taste it, and it's so rich and creamy. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our avocado. And I love buying frozen avocado because it doesn't go bad, but I have some. I had some fresh avocado on hand. And we are gonna add a little extra sweetener because I definitely do have a sweet tooth, and I just like it to taste like dessert, you know? And then we're gonna add in our ice. And let's go ahead and blend. I want you to see the texture of this. You guys are gonna be blown away. Okay, not me getting smoothie all over my face this morning. Okay, so here goes. Look at this texture. Oh my gosh, literally reminds me of like a shake. And I always like to top it off with a little cinnamon. And then my glass straw because it makes me feel fancy. <laughs> mm. this, this protein tastes just like dessert. I'll go ahead and leave it in the description below for you. Okay, and now let's go ahead and move on to our first meal. So we're gonna move over to our stove now. I'm gonna add in some avocado oil and I do have the heat at about a medium high heat because we are gonna cook our salmon here. So while our oil's heating up, we're gonna go ahead and season this with a little salt and pepper. I'm gonna do both sides just so that the skin on the bottom is also seasoned because I love a crispy seasoned skin. <laughs> we're just gonna do salt on the skin, no pepper. And we're gonna cook this skin side down so we can get a nice crispy skin. So we can get a nice crispy skin. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this cooking for about a couple minutes. Now, because it is a nice thick salmon steak, I'm gonna cover it so the uh, middle can cook evenly. Okay. Ooh, yes, get a nice, beautiful crust. Let's go ahead and flip this over because of course we need both sides to be fully cooked. So as you can see, this is nice and crispy. My favorite, literally one of my favorite parts of salmon. So now we're gonna go ahead and cover it to make sure that it is fully cooked. Ooh, salmon is perfectly cooked, nice, crisp, actually on both sides, which I really love. I'm totally here for it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my salad. This is one of my go-to salads. Look at this bowl. 
so beautiful, right? I love big bowls, big salads. They just like fill my my eyes. <laughs> like, um, okay, so salads are a really, really big part of my life. Um, I love salads because they're really filling. Um, I don't do well with like really small portions of food. So for me, salads are just like, there's veggies and kind of like a lot going on, textures and you know, the whole nine. So I feel like your diet doesn't have to be boring and with salads you could really, really accomplish that because you can get like a whole variety of different colors, textures, flavors. Um, so anyway, just throwing that out there, but let's go ahead and get started. I'm actually gonna make a homemade dressing. Um, it's just really, really simple. You can use this on different salads, whether you're making steak, chicken, shrimp, in this case, salmon. So let's go ahead and whip this up, okay? So we're starting off with some red wine vinegar. This is a very, very simple, but super, super tasty dressing. Then we have Dijon mustard. And then we have a little avocado oil. And we're gonna add in our salt and pepper. Okay, and then let's go ahead and whisk. So you obviously wanna make sure you taste your dressing just to make sure it's perfect. And, mm, oh my God, it's delicious. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and set it aside. And we are gonna be using this big salad bowl because it's beautiful and huge and open. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna show you how I assemble my salad. So we're gonna start off with romaine lettuce. I love romaine because it's like nice and crunchy, like it has that crisp. If you don't like romaine, you can obviously use your favorite lettuce of choice, like arugula or like mixed greens. But for me, I go with romaine. We have our cherry tomatoes, and then we have our Persian cucumber. And now we're gonna add in our bacon. So I have turkey bacon, it's what I have on hand, but of course you're gonna use your favorite bacon of choice. And it's nice and crispy. Like for this salad, you have to make sure that your bacon is crispy. That is like 100% a must. <laughs> then we have our feta cheese. And you can't have a cob salad without eggs. <laughs> have our eggs. I like a medium boiled just because I cannot stand really dry yolks. And to add to our healthy fats, because fats do help keep you satiated throughout the day, we are gonna add in some avocado. So this one, I'm just gonna slice it really quickly and then just toss it in. Okay, now we're gonna top off our salad with our protein. Woo wee, guys, look at that. Okay, I would pay. <laughs> This is like restaurant style quality. Okay, we have buttery salmon, all the toppings. Like this is the perfect Cobb salad. I'm telling you, obviously I'm not gonna eat this whole thing. We're gonna share it, but a Cobb salad, because it has healthy fats, it has your protein. Like in this case, salmon is a very fatty fish. Fats keep you satiated. Like don't be afraid of fats. Like I grew up being like super paranoid about fatty foods. Like I got low fat everything. And anyway, bottom line is that I've learned so much throughout the years and fats are not the enemy, okay? Um, obviously I focus on protein. I love my veggies and then my fat, I just use, use it as a lever to um, keep me satiated. So the fats, just always remember, if you add a little bit of fats to your protein and your meals, you're going to be able to go a longer period of time without eating. Okay, so meal one is done. Our salmon cob salad is ready. Let's go ahead and do just a little taste test. And then we are gonna sit down and enjoy because this is just too good not to eat. Mm, oh my God. Mm. beyond delicious. I'm telling you, like how could this be healthy? It just tastes so good, you know? Okay, so I just wanna show you how this salmon is perfectly cooked. It's like buttery, soft. Guys, all the textures in the salad are perfection. Crispy, crispy bacon. You have the Persian cucumber, you have the tomatoes, the cheese, the feta is like a must for me, must. And then the dressing just brings it all together. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and have lunch and then I will see you guys back for dinner. Okay, so before dinner, I usually like to do a little snack just so I don't 
get like super, super hungry and then like overeat. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that I like to snack on. Um, if I'm gonna do fruit, it's usually a bowl of strawberries, um, just a few. I don't go really crazy on fruit because even though it's fruit and it is healthy, it does have natural sugars. Um, and if I have too many of them, then I start craving carbs. So I usually just, you know, kind of do just like a small little bowl. And then I also love almonds. So these are like Marcona almonds. I'll do like a small little bowl of these. Love beef jerky. So um, this one here is like a sriracha beef jerky it's actually chicken but um, anything like super quick easy that's full of protein again like for me protein really goes a long way um, fats as well so fats and proteins will usually carry me on until dinner so that's kind of what I'm gonna do now just to kind of like a little snack I'll show you I mean it's probably looks funny but it's literally just beef jerky some almonds and my strawberries so one of the mistakes that I feel people make when um, they're snacking is they have too much fruit or sugars or carbs. Um, if I have chips, I'm gonna crave a lot of carbs. They're not satiating whatsoever. So I'm not gonna feel like satisfied, you know? I'm gonna get hungry and I'm gonna want more carbs. So more junky, like snacky cookies, um, chips, crackers, like things like that. If I have um, a lot of sugar, so fruits, if I have too many of them as well, um, the same thing happens. So I try to stick to proteins and fats even with snacking. So this is my little snack and it's gonna hold me off until dinner. We're gonna get started on dinner. So I usually like to go a little lighter for dinner, whether I do chicken, shrimp, sometimes even salmon. It really just depends on what I'm craving. Um, and once in a while I do crave steak and so I'll have it. It's just that steak feels like a lot heavier for me, especially like at night. So I usually will do steak. If I do it, I'll do like a small amount or just a little earlier in the day, like an earlier dinner. So we're going with the curry chicken and I have everything laid out here. So we're gonna go ahead and prep this. Now, if, you, if you're like one of those people that just like, I'm not gonna make it. It's just too many steps. You can also just do marinades. So I pick these up like from Thrive. I usually just order them. Um, just different sauces like this. So you can literally just throw, you know, into your cooked chicken. Super bomb, super easy. So that's also an option. Let me know if you want me to share like all the sauces that I buy to make like different meals. I just try to buy things that really just make my life easier. Sometimes like after work, the last thing I'm trying to do is like make a whole meal from scratch. So those are legit like lifesavers, you know what I mean? Um, okay. So for today though, we are making it from scratch. Of course, I'm gonna link this recipe down below for you so you guys can go make it. It's clean ingredients, super delicious. So here we have our chicken. It's already sliced. I kind of just um, sliced it so that sometimes when the chicken breast is too thick, I feel like, you know, I get, I don't know, like weirded out by the, by the inside not being fully cooked. So we cut these in half and now we're just gonna season them. So we're gonna do our salt. Okay, we're gonna do salt and pepper just to taste. If you want a measurement, I would say about quarter teaspoon, depending on how much chicken you're using. I'm using about a pound here. So I would say about a quarter teaspoon would be good. So we have our onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika. Now we're just going to toss this right in. Beautiful. Then we have our minced garlic. So this is just fresh garlic. You can use um, more garlic powder, but you can never replicate the taste of fresh garlic. <laughs> so if you have it, use it. So my secret ingredient for this recipe is Greek yogurt, and it just helps keep the chicken really, really moist. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pour that in. Let's go ahead and coat our chicken. So I'm just gonna go ahead and coat my chicken in all the seasonings, and then we'll move over to the stove. So you're gonna wanna leave your chicken cooking just on one side without touching it for about three to four minutes, just so it gets a nice crisp. It's gonna turn like nice golden brown. And I'll show you what that'll look like right now. Ooh, that's good, right? And as you can tell, the yogurt really lends for a really nice sear on the chicken. Like, look at that color, it's gorgeous. Looks delicious. And it smells amazing. We're gonna add in our onion our red bell peppers, give that a good mix.
So we're just gonna saute these for about two minutes, just until your onions start to get translucent and the peppers just aren't as hard. Okay, so to make my life easier and to save some time, I decided just to go with a jarred coconut curry. This is a medium heat, but they do have every, they have mild, they have super hot. Um, I just like the medium because it's, you know, just in between. And it's so much easier because at this point, all we're gonna do is let this come to a boil and throw our chicken in. I am gonna garnish it with cilantro, but I'm gonna throw some in just for flavor. Okay, so now we're just gonna put our chicken back into our curry sauce. I'm actually gonna leave it whole just because if I chop it, I feel like it's gonna kinda get lost in there and I do wanna take a beautiful little photo. But this, at this point, it really is just to your liking. If you wanna dice it, chop it, slice it. But I really think that a full chicken breast with some sauce on top over a bed of like collie rice or even a salad would be so delicious. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of avocado oil for our rice, okay? So we're gonna throw in our kali rice. I've already tried taking out most of the moisture. So you wanna make sure that you drain your kali rice with a kitchen towel. Just get as much of the moisture out that you can because if not, you actually have to cook it out here stovetop. But as you can see, mine right now is already nice and fluffy, and that's because I was able to get most of it out. And that way you end up with nice fluffy rice instead of mushy. So our chicken curry is done, our fluffy rice is all set. I'm gonna go ahead and plate this now. If I was being lazy and I didn't make the kali rice, I would have totally just done like a, made this into a salad. So I would have laid out like a bed of lettuce and then put my chicken and then the curry sauce as a dressing, guys. I've done it, bomb. But today, I went all the way for you, and I just kinda want you to see that, like, this is obviously a chicken curry bowl, but you can make a teriyaki chicken, you can make like a steak bowl, you can make it with shrimp. Like, you can play around with so many different recipes and like never, ever get bored. Because I think at the end of the day, like, what makes a low carb lifestyle sustainable or even like a weight loss journey sustainable is you being able to actually stick to it, you know? So if you're eating delicious foods, they're nice and satisfying and like just, you know, overall just meet your needs across the board, you're gonna stick with it. So let's go ahead and plate this. We are going to do a little collie rice. So for the sauce, because I want it to look nice and pretty, I'm gonna put the sauce under the chicken. Okay, and I'm getting all the veggies, and you can add more veggies. If you're like a veggie person, you can even add like snap peas, broccoli, I mean really just whatever you want. I just did onions and bell pepper to keep it super, super simple and you know, easy. So we have our sauce and now our grilled chicken on top. Guys, the smell of this is phenom. I truly cannot wait to dig in because I am a huge fan of curry. Every time I go to like to a Thai restaurant, if curry's on the menu, I'm ordering it. And I mean, you can't go wrong with Kali rice, right? This here is, it's just super fluffy, light. It does the job. We're just gonna get right into it because it is that time. And this looks so bomb. Mm. Oh my God. That sauce is so good. The chicken is perfectly moist. The sauce is spicy, but not too spicy. And you have a fluffy rice to go with it. Guys, I'm telling you. Sometimes I feel like we put too much like thought into it and it really isn't that difficult, you know, to make like really delicious food. Just make your little chicken, your protein, whatever it is that you want, throw in a sauce. Now, I'm all about making homemade sauces and making them from scratch. But sometimes during the week, like you just need to make it and go, you know, and this is just perfect. A little rice, you can make like a double, triple batch, keep that in the fridge so that you have more um, throughout the week. But something like this, it's gonna taste amazing. Your family's gonna love it. And if you're alone, then meal prep it. All right, guys, so I hope you really enjoyed this video. These are just some of the things that I really like to eat, kind of 
gave you examples of what you can do so that you just don't get tired of eating the same foods. Um, I'm gonna leave all the recipes in the description below. If you guys found this video to be helpful, make sure you hit that like button and share not only these recipes, but the channel with friends and family that are living a low carb lifestyle or just looking for healthier choices to their favorite foods. Guys, thanks so much for being here. I love you and I will see you on my next video. Mwah.